eternal Father, we come to worship you and you alone. Because you are worthy, your name is excellent. There is no other God but you. It is only by your grace and mercy that we still stand. So God, come and displace the day. Honor us, God, with your presence, your power, and your provision. Anoint us afresh, God, that we may be used for your glory. We pray now, God, for these officers and the members, the choir, the musicians, the ushers, the greeters, the acolytes, everybody under the voice of mine, I pray right now that you will send down your Shekinah glory and fulfill us, God, with excitement and enthusiasm, for this is the day you've made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Have your way, have your way, have your way. This is our prayer. Amen. Um, I'll be reading uh, Psalms 78, chapter 78, verses 1 through 8. And it reads, <clears throat> my people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things, things from old, things we have heard and known, things our ancestors have told us. Yeah. We will not hide them for, uh, from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and his wonders uh, he has done. Yes. He decreed statues for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children so the next generation would know them, yes. even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children. Amen. Then they would, tell, or they would put their trust in God mm -hmm. and would not forget his deeds but would keep his commands. They would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose heart were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to him. The word of God for the people of God. I need just a little more Jesus. 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 Help me along. I need just a little more Jesus. I need just a little more hey, Jesus. Hey, I need just a little more Jesus. I need hey, a little more yeah, Jesus. Hey, I need just a little more Jesus. I need hey, just hey, more Jesus. help me along the way. Mm. I got too mad and I said too much. And I almost cussed Though my mama didn't raise me that way Lord, I need a little help today Way too sad and I cry too long I can't keep saying everything just wrong Cause my life seems way too hard But ain't nothing too hard for God said I need just a little more Jesus I need just a little more Jesus Hey, I need just a little more Jesus I need just a little more Jesus Hey, yeah Help me along the 
at work and problems at home. Won't everybody just leave me alone? I can't fix you because I'm trying to fix me. Try to find help because I'm on my knees. Got an ache right here, pain right there. Not enough power, need a way more prayer. Seems like it's too hard to pray. I guess that's how I lost my way. Said I need just a little more Jesus. I need just a little more Jesus. Hey, hey, I need just a little more Jesus. I need hey, yeah, I need. Oh, 
Schoolist lesson this morning talked about the fact that God answers prayer. He answers prayer. How many of you know that we have a, an, a God who answers prayer? Sometimes you call for help on the phone, but you get a busy signal. Sadly enough, sometimes people look at call ID and decide not to answer. But God is always attentive to his people's cries. He's always listening, and he wants to answer those prayers. So, so would you now assume a position of prayer and humble your hearts before the Lord? And not only as I pray, would you pray along with me and not only pray for yourselves, but pray for others? I still remember that song, Somebody Prayed For Me. So pray for others also as we go before the throne of grace. Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace, Lord. We thank you for your loving kindness, Lord. Father God, you've been so good to us, Lord. But Father God, we've given you so many reasons, Lord God, not to love us. But you haven't changed your mind, Lord. Because you are love. We thank you, Lord God, that you love us, Lord God, with an unfailing love. Father God, we thank you that you loved us so much, Lord, that you sent your son, Jesus who came, suffered, bled, and died for us, Lord. But Lord God, you also loved us so much that you raised him up from the dead, Lord. And when you raised him, Father God, you gave us the ability to be raised in him, Father. We thank you, Father God, for new birth, Lord God, and new life in you. Father God, you know the prayer requests, Lord God, that have been written down. Father God, you hear the prayer requests, Lord God, that are even being made right now, Father God. And Lord God, you even know the needs that aren't being articulated, Lord. But Father God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask, Lord, that you meet the need of every man, woman, boy, and girl in Jesus' name. But Father God, we know, Lord God, that there's healing in the name of Jesus. We know, Father God, that there's wholeness in the name of Jesus. We know, Lord God, that there is freedom from stress and depression in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for this men's day, Lord. But Father God, you've 
reminded us of some things, Lord God, during these events that have taken place, Lord. That, Father God, you're calling your men, Lord God, to rise, Father God, to the height that you've called us to, Lord God. And, Lord God, you've challenged our hearts, Lord God, to empower the next generation, Lord. Father God, you've told us, Lord God, that the way we empower them, Father God, is by sharing with them, Lord God, genuine encouragement, Lord. You've told us, Lord God, that we need to share training with them, Lord God, but it needs to be knowledge-based, Lord. And Father God, you've also challenged us, Lord God, that we need to know when to step aside, Lord God, and let them take over, Father. Father God, we thank you, Father, that you've reminded us, Lord God, that you've called us to be emblems, Lord God. Father God, we look at cars, Lord God, that have a kidney, two kidneys in front, Lord, and we know it's a BMW, Lord. We see a star, Lord God, and we know it's a Mercedes, Lord God. We know the excellence behind those and other brands, Father. But Lord God, you've called us to a higher calling, Father. You've called us to be the standard of your excellence, Lord God. I ask right now, Lord God, that you stir the hearts, Lord God, of every man, Lord God, every boy, Lord God, every male, Lord God, that we will rise up, Lord God, and show your glory, Lord God, as we walk in this life you've given us, Lord. Father God, you've reminded us, Lord God, that the way we empower, Lord God, the next generation, Lord, is by us being healthy, Lord God, mentally and physically, Lord. Help us, Lord God, to rise to that occasion, Lord. Because the spirit can't go, Lord God, where the mind and the body won't take it, Father. Please help us, Lord God, to be, Lord God, healthy triune beings, Lord. Spirit, soul, and body. Father God, I ask you, Lord God, that you transform our lives, Lord. So that, Lord God, we are indeed soldiers on the battlefield for you, Lord God. And, Lord God, we will not retreat and we will not surrender, Lord. And, Father God, we're going to fight on either until Jesus comes back, Lord, or until we come home to you. Father God, we ask that you will bless our pastor, Lord God, and, and Sister Jennifer, Lord God, their family, Lord God. We speak healing, health, and protection over them in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we ask that you will bless, Lord God, Brother Lamb, Lord God, and his family, Lord. We speak life over them in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father God, I ask that you go into the depths, Lord God, of our brother Lamb, Lord God, and you stir him up, Lord God, so he'll speak to us with clarity, boldness, and inspiration, Lord. Lord God, we're going to listen to him, Lord God, just as if, Lord God, you are speaking through him, Lord. And we're each going to not only hear what he has to say, Lord God, we'll not only hear what you speak through him, Lord, but we'll also be doers, Lord God, of your word, Father. We thank you for this day, Lord God. This is a day you've made, and we rejoice in it, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We worship. We adore you. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, your loving kindness. And most of all, Lord God, we thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen.
said today that prayer can change things. How many of you know that this morning? Oh, that wasn't convincing to me. How many of you know that prayer changes things? We're going to go back to this old song. I know, 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 I
Oh, I know that prayer, 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 prayer changes, things. changes things. I know that prayer, 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 prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. I, was out, I was out, out on the stormy sea, out on the stormy sea, out on the stormy sea, out on the stormy sea. Out on the sea. Out on the sea. Oh, I've been hungry. I've been sick, I've been filled with misery. Oh, but King Jesus, King Jesus came and rescued me. I found the answer. I tell it everywhere. Oh, I know. Beside every good man is a good woman. Can I get an amen, Brother Walter? I know what prayer can do. Good morning, Quinn Chapel. Uh, to the pastor, Pastor Wright, I truly appreciate the honor and the privilege to uh, sit beside you today uh, and speak to this fantastic congregation, to the pulpit leadership, to the choir, 
and to the members of this church. Thank you for the opportunity to visit with you this morning. I bring you greetings from Greater Mount Zion Primitive Baptist Church in Tallahassee, Florida, where Pastor James Vaughn is the pastor. My mother, Dolores Lamb, Mother Lamb, and my father, Deacon Eugene Lamb, uh, send their blessings because they were not able to be here this morning. It's men's day. It's men's day. We have an opportunity to celebrate men of all ages. We have a chance to recognize why they are so important to the church and so important to society. It is particularly important to me to celebrate black men. Today, it does not take long to read the newspaper to watch the news, to see a text message or an email about something related to black men. I'm here to tell you today, black men are still strong. What I would like to do this morning, as I was thinking about the opportunity to be here and I was invited by Brother Walton, who I truly appreciate the opportunity. I get a chance to work alongside Brother Walton in the business world, uh, but I know we are brothers in the spiritual world. Amen. And this morning, what I was thinking about uh, was how do I make uh, what I do every day in the business world come alive in terms of what we are here today to do? So what I'm going to do is ask you, if you've got your Bibles, I'm going to take you to a scripture that can lay the foundation for the next few minutes of our conversation. I'm going to take you to Proverbs 22, chapter 1, I'm sorry, verse 1 through 6. Proverbs 22, verses 1 through 6. Church, and the word reads, choose a good reputation over great riches. Being held in high self-esteem is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord made them both. A prudent person foresees danger and takes precaution. The simpleton? goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. True humility and fear of the Lord leads to riches, honor, and long life. Corrupt people walk a thorny and treacherous road. Whosoever values life will avoid it. Direct your children on the right path, and when they are older, they will not Leave it. I have read to you Proverbs chapter 22, verses 1 through 6, and it will guide the theme for my message today, a good name. A good name is really hard to build. But church, I tell you, it's even harder to keep. To the men of the church, my message is for you, but I would tell you, as I stand here today, that it is equally as important for women to have a good name. I am joined here today by my virtuous woman, Sister Lamb, and my daughter, five-year-old Ava. When she's behaving, she's Ava. When she's not, she's the full name, Ava Peyton Lamb. <laughs> you all know what I mean. So this good name, as I reflect on that, I'd like you to kind of think with me through this. At work, 
I carry a briefcase. I walk around every day uh, alongside over 8,000 of my colleagues and over 20,000 around the country working hard to be a good banker. But what I want you to think about today with regards to a good name is I've got a different bag. I've got a spiritual bag. Now, a spiritual bag, you, you can't necessarily see. It doesn't have a strap on it. It doesn't say Louis Vuitton. Uh, it, it doesn't have any of that. See, a spiritual bag, you carry with you everywhere. Now, the question about having a good name is what's in the bag. Okay? So as we go on this journey, as we empower the next generation, we all have a role and we all need a bag. Now, as Jesus and the disciples moved around from city to city, uh, they didn't have a bag that you could see either. But with Jesus, we know he carried miracles. He carried the word. He carried a lot of things with him in his spiritual bag. I want you to join me today, this morning, church, as you fill up your bag. The first thing I want you to do, I want you to open your spiritual bag with me as we build a good name. And we're going to put some things in this bag that are important as men and important as, as, as Christians to put in our bag. The first tool I want you to put in your bag is relationships. Now, the most important relationship that we should always have in our bag is a close and personal relationship with who? Now, you need to put that in your bag. Don't let it out. You have to carry that close and personal relationship with you everywhere if you are to have a good name. And if you are to empower the next generation, you're going to need this in your bag. Now, there are other relationships that are very important to put in your bag. You, you need to have a relationship with your significant other and your friends. I encourage men, young men in particular, to seek out a virtuous woman. Okay, if you don't know where it is, I would love to show you. It's in Proverbs as well. It talks about a virtuous woman and how incredibly important she is to a man. That means if you're going to have relationships and you're going to put them in your bag, you better put the right ones. You better put the right ones. Jesus had 12 disciples. We know one of them betrayed him. From time to time, there will be someone in your bag that betrays you. Get them out of your bag. It can happen to the best of us, and that's okay. But you have to recognize the company you keep. You have to be smart about the people that are around you. You have to think about the relationships that are in your bag. Now, that's an important tool when you think about a good name. As you move forward in this next generation, what was that tool we just talked about? Relationships. I got another tool for you. I want you to think about another tool. This tool we call engagement. This tool is called engagement. See, you, when you're engaged in something, that means you're actively involved. That means you're participating. That means you're finding a way to add value. That means you're contributing in a meaningful way. If you are going to be engaged in the church, men, then you have to be active. You have to find ways to participate, young men. We need you. We need you to engage in the church. We need you to find ways to engage inside the church, whether it's church, church school or other member services. There are ways for you to add value. There are things that will enrich you that will also enrich the church. You have to have engagement in your bag. Now, if you, if, you, if you follow the ways of Christ, a lot of his work was done where? Outside the church. So if you're going to engage, not only do you have to engage inside the church, 
you have to engage outside the church. That's Christ-like. So I know at Quinn Chapel there are lots of ways for you as men to engage. Many of the men that need to hear the message of our pastor in the message and learnings of this church aren't in the church. So we have to go seek them out. We have to meet them where they are. We have to find ways to engage, to deliver the word. We have to drive and execute on the mission and purpose of Quinn Chapel. And so when I ask you about your bag, and you got the tool engagement in there. It's both inside the church and outside the church. And as men, we have a role to play. And I would implore you to find ways to engage. It will enrich you. It will inspire you. It will give you a chance to do what Jesus would do. And that's serve. We talked about a couple of tools in the bag. What was the first tool? How about that second tool? Your bag ain't full yet. You got a little more room for me? I got another tool. Now, I want you to, to think about something here with regards to responsibility. Now, as Christians, we have a responsibility. Now, that's a powerful tool. That's a heavy tool. That can sometimes be a burden. But if, if we are to prepare the next generation, or if we are to empower them uh, for the the elder men in the church, the role that you can play and the responsibility you have is, is to help guide and direct and provide perspective and insight that can help the younger generation of men walk the right path, make the right decisions, do the right thing. You follow me? Church, say amen. amen. See, the responsibility tool, not everybody wants that one in their bag. That's too much work, Pastor. Yeah. Wow. Reverend Sims, I don't, I don't, I, I'm busy. I got something to do. I can't have all that responsibility. Reverend Turner, that's, that's too much for me to work on. I got, I got my other problems I got to deal with. Right. See, responsibility, yes, that's a heavy tool. Now, everybody's going to put it in their bag. I ask that you reconsider. We all have a responsibility as Christians. It's written in the word, the pastor delivered it, and the mission of this church lives it. We have a responsibility to uplift others. We have a responsibility to give good, sound, objective advice. We have a responsibility to love one another. We have a responsibility to turn the other cheek we have a responsibility to live the commandments. We have, we have a responsibility. I'd like you to put it in your bag. As you think about empowering this next generation, as you think about having a good name, you got to have a spiritual bag. And in that bag has to be things that can stand the test of time. It has to be things that aren't material. It has to be things that, that aren't centered around what's about you. That selflessness is, is what you've got to consider when you get your bag. We want to have a good name, church. We have to prepare and empower this next generation of men. And in order to do that, all of us need a bag. What was the first tool in the bag? We had a second tool. What was the second tool? We had a heavy, heavy tool we just put in there. Church, y'all not with me this morning. I see a few people looking at their bag. I'm not calling anybody out. I have to look in my bag from time to time. 
it's the right thing to do. And my wife reminds me about my bag from time to time. <laughs> this is about us. This is about us coming together. Okay? This is about us loving each other. We all have a bag. If it's okay with you, I'd like to, I got, I got another tool I'd like you to think about for your bag. Is that okay? Now, when you talk about having a good name and you are in the world as a man, you've got to think about the role that you can play for others. Leadership. I'm going to say it again. So a few people look away. Leadership is a tool that you want in your bag. Now, I want you to think about leadership. That doesn't mean you're in charge. Uh, that, that, that doesn't mean that you're going to sit in the pastor chair. That, that's not what I'm kind of leadership I'm talking about. I'm talking about leadership through influence. I'm, think, I'm talking about leadership through what I call modeling the way. I knew somebody else I read about from time to time that modeled the way his name was Jesus. I want you to think about the life of Jesus in the simplest sense. What was he doing? He was giving us an example of the way in which we should what? Live. He was modeling the way. He was leading. He would tell his disciples, if you go into the city and you look to deliver the word and, and they don't want to listen, they, they're not interested in it, he said, then leave. I'm not going to force anyone to do anything that they don't want to do. But a great leader can inspire. A great leader can influence. A great leader can motivate. A great leader can guide. A great leader can model the way. A great leader can give vision and perspective. A great leader can open opportunities for others, not just themselves, but they can create a path. And then it's up to that individual to walk it. See, uh, when you think about Christ, and the leadership that he provided for us then, the leadership that he provides for us now, uh, we've got a role to play. Yeah, that's right. yeah. To the men in the church, uh, whether it's inside the church or outside the church, you can play a leadership role. You can model the way for others. And to our women in the church, you absolutely have a role in today's society. It is so very important as I think about my own two daughters and the, the role that my wife plays in modeling the way for them and, and leading them in such a way that they can grow up and make good decisions and be virtuous women and have a positive impact on society. Now listen to me. Now I know this might not be fancy, but this is, this is the essence of preparing the next generation. This is the essence of having a good name. It's not about riches. God made both the rich and the poor. The, le the playing field is level. The question is, what's in your bag? We, we've talked about uh, a few tools this morning, church, that I hope uh, have given you some perspective on how to think about uh, empowering the next generation. We've covered a few tools. I, I want to make sure we got them. What, what, what was the first tool? Okay, we, we had another tool in there. Engagement. Now, this other tool is kind of heavy. I saw a few bags hit the floor. I just want to make sure we all, we all on the same page. What was that third tool? Responsibility. Now, the fourth tool we talked a lot about. Which, which one was that? Pastor, I, I think they got it. I got one last tool. Got one last tool. Now don't, don't zip your bag up yet. Now this tool is probably the most important tool you'll have in your bag. There'll be good days and there'll be bad days. 
There'll be days when you are surrounded by uh, amazing, wonderful people, and there'll be days when you're alone. There'll be days when you're celebrating success, and there's days where you are trying to get over failure. There'll be days where you are crying, and there'll be days when you are laughing. But every day, this tool must be in your bag, and that's prayer. Church, I want you to know you're never alone. Church, I want you to know as that bag gets heavy, and it will, you've got someone you can call on. Church, I want, I want you to know that, that when the doors of the church are closed and, and we are going back to our daily lives, uh, and we are working hard, and we are raising our families, and we're taking care of our friends. All the things that go on in our life, there's a tool you can open up your bag. Anytime you want. Anywhere you want. And you can use that tool. I'm here to tell you it works. There isn't a lock it can't open. Okay? Okay? There's no security that can stop it. You go through the airport, they got all that security now. You can go right through there with prayer. Okay? There's nowhere that you can't take this tool with you. Now, this tool requires faith. See, this tool, you, just don't, you can't just have this tool in any kind of way. Okay? Can't just anybody have this tool. You got to have faith. You have to believe. You have to know there's one God. I don't want to, I don't want to get nobody upset this morning. This is, this is a tool that is the most important tool you will have with you for all the days of your life. Put it in your bag. Use the tool. Don't let it get rusty. Don't let it be one of those tools that don't work no more. Put it in your bag. Church, on this journey, as we think about empowering the next generation, as we think about the wonderful men, the strong men that are in this church, they need a bag. As, as the women that are here in this church, encourage those men. Ask them about their bag. Help them keep these tools in the bag and, and keep these tools working in good order. We talked about a few things this morning. And today is about the next generation. We talked about as that next generation moves forward, there's fundamentally something they have to get right. They have to have a good name. They have to have a good name. If Deacon Lamb, my father, was here, he would tell you that he spent a lot of his time in prayer helping me understand the value of a good name. It is now my responsibility to carry on that legacy. It is now my responsibility. Church, I think about the spiritual bag that we all carry and the tools that are in that bag. I know we had some fun talking through what was in the bag and the tools. I hope there are tools that connect it with you. There are things that, that, that are tools that you are very comfortable using on your own or together. But I will share with you, as I close, I want you to think about one last thing. That on Christ's journey from city to city with his 12 disciples, they had their spiritual bag. There were things in that bag, some of which we are talking about today. But as men, as men, it's really important that we think about as we walk around with our own bag. That we are an example. And that we have to be a rock in today's society when there were so many people reaching in the bag 
to challenge the very essence of who we are. To come after and, and question our own beliefs, to threaten some of the things that we believe are sacred. I'd ask that you remain Christ-like. And right when those times get tough, right when you are frustrated and upset, right when you believe that things are, are going backwards, I'd ask that you reach over and you open your bag and you put one more thing in there, and that's love. You got to love one another. We got to love one another. I know it can be hard. I know it can be difficult. Sometimes it might even be hard to explain. But you got to have faith. And if you're using the other tools that are in the bag, you are, are well positioned to love one another. And when the day is done, church, when the horn blows, and we go home. You got to leave behind a lot of these things here. You got to leave behind the material things. You can't take them with you. The friends and the brothers and the sisters, you can't take them with you. They got their own path. When the day is done and you zip up that bag. And when you, when you go home, just know there's someone waiting on you. And he's got another bag for you. Church, it's been an honor to spend some time with you today. Uh, I think about the journey that we are all on as men and as women. I think about the mission of Quinn Chapel under the leadership, Pastor Wright the active and engaged congregation, the spiritual hymns that we hear from the choir. We got a lot to be happy about.